guys, welcome to another episode of Color Connection with Amber. Today I'm sharing fresh summer card designs with this awesome color palette from the May 2020 Inspiration Challenge. I'm hosting this month, so be sure to check out the Inspiration Challenge with the link down below. Today I'm going to be using Inked Flora for the first card, and these have some fantastic large blooms on them. I love the illustrated style of these. And there are several sets in this collection with Inked Flora, Inked Rose, and Inked Bud, and hopefully they'll be more soon. As always, inside the product insert, you'll find loads of inspiration with card examples, as well as color palette choices, as well as other stamp sets that would coordinate very well with Inked Flora. To start off, I'm going to stamp the Inked Flora Largest Bloom with Obsidian Pigment Ink. And then I'll also stamp a couple of the leaves and die cut them with the coordinating dies. Now, at first I thought I was going to just be using these black and white as they were for a really graphic feel to it, but then I decided that they did need a pop of color more than just the background piece that I was gonna to put together. So because I've already stamped this in obsidian pigment ink, which is not Copic safe, I decided to do the dotting technique for coloring so that I'm not swiping the marker over the ink. So I'm using buttercream, mango smoothie, orange cream, autumn blaze, and limestone. And I'm using both ends of the marker. So the bullet nib for small dots and then the brush tip nib to add some larger dots. So I'm starting off with the lightest color buttercream and then working my way up to that autumn blaze color to add greater amount of contrast. And I'm really just basically adding these dots for the shadows. After I have what I feel like is a good amount of dots, and you can see that I'm adding these larger ones with the brush nib, then I decide that I need some additional shadow. So I'm using the limestone artist marker to add some additional shadows. I'll have a list of all of the products used down below, so be sure to check that out if you're interested in a particular color. I'm adding sketchy shadows with the limestone artist marker to match the illustrative style of the stamp. I decided I wanted to inlay the cardstock strips, and so I have a piece of Nina here with some tape runner on it, and I've trimmed a small edge off of the turquoise blue cardstock, and then I've trimmed a 3 16th inch wide strip of orange cardstock and 1 8 inch wide of yellow cardstock. I'm just going to inlay those in. And I originally had put that large background piece on first, but I cut it too large. So I just peeled it up and started with the stripes just so that I could trim this off easier on the trimmer. So I trimmed off the extra edges. And here I was deciding between sentiment strips and sentiment strips too. Ultimately, I picked Hello there from Sentiment Strips 2, and I'm actually going to stamp that right on the orange cardstock strip that's inlaid. I've cut a piece of orange fun foam, and I'm going to pop up my flower on this. I've cut that with the coordinating die, and I'll get that adhered down. Now here, I decided to cut off the overhang, and then I totally regretted it. I think it looks much better with the overhang. So a lot of times, I will just make a custom envelope to accommodate the overhang, or I may trim it before I send the card. Here's a close up and I think that the gray limestone shadows make such a big difference in the dim overall dimension of the bloom. And I've added some satin gold sequins to finish off the card and I really do like that inlaid sentiment. Here I have a circle die and I've matched this up with the overall size of the Gradient Sunset stamp set and I'm using that as a guide. Now you could easily die cut a circle, that's the die that comes, the coordinating die that comes with the set. You could easily die cut it, but I wanted this to be a one layer clean and simple card. So I'm gonna use this circle as a guide. And I'm gonna set up, so obviously I have the water down below that was stamped in tied blue and then for these three stamps, I thought it would be easier to go ahead and get them lined up and ink them up that way versus lining up one at a time. I thought that there'd be more chance for them to be offset. So I'm stamping the first one in buttercream. And what I'll do is I'll just wipe off the stamps because obviously you can't just ink up the, the center stamp. Now, you could mask it with some post-it tape or a post-it note, but I felt it was just as easy just to wipe off the excess ink from the other stamps. And if a little bit is still on there as residual, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. So you can see there's just a touch of yellow on that last stamp there. 
that's gonna get covered up by the orange cream. So in the, so I had buttercream, then warm sunshine, and then orange cream. Here I have one of the sentiments from the set. This is summer, and I'm gonna stamp this in obsidian pigment ink. And here it looks really nice. And then I stamped it a little bit offset, but it ended up working out because then it actually centered the sentiment vertically. So I'm gonna go with it. Here I've lined up the palm tree with the M to run straight through the vertical part of the M there. And I've just added a couple of the silhouette birds and that's the finished card, super simple. I love this color palette with the Gradient Sunset stamp set. It reminds me of a graphic tee that you might find on vacation. And I think it's just really striking and perfect just the way it is. Of course, you could add a little bit of black splatter or some sequins if you like. Thanks so much for joining me today. Be sure to enter your projects into the May 2020 Inspiration Challenge. I'll have that link down below. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you real soon with more inspiration.